Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Less Than Ten with Tom. In the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, we read these words in verses 22 through 25. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. In Paul's letter to the Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God's greatest desire is to be believed. You can pray regularly and ritually and even feel closer to God as a result, yet not expect him to answer your prayers or for your situation to change. In Acts chapter 12, starting at verse 1, we read this. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. And when he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. And after arresting him, he put him into prison handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So we see that Peter had been put in prison, was about to be tried and sentenced to death. But the church was praying night and day for his release. And they received a miracle. Picking it up in verse 6, the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. So God put the guards to sleep, opened Peter's prison door, and set him free. Picking it up in verse 11. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. And when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark where many people had gathered and were praying. And Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. So here's Peter, standing on the doorstep of the house where the believers were praying. And they can't even believe it. And he's left out there all by himself. You're out of your mind, they told her. And when she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. And then he left for another place. Even the early disciples struggled to believe that God would hear them. And even when the answer knocked on their door, they still hesitated. And we do too, don't we? We struggle with prayer. We forget to pray. And when we remember, 
we rush through prayers with insincere words, and our thoughts disperse like a flock of geese. Why does this happen? We can pray anywhere, at any time, using our own words, and God promises to answer. So what is the problem? We need to realize the incredible power and potential of one praying believer. In his second letter to the church in Corinth, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. So it is important that we don't just pray, but that we believe God for the answer. And then talk and act like you believe. Have a great week, church. God loves you. And remember, he hears your prayers. Have a great day.